Job 9. Job then spoke up and said, Truly, I know that it is so. How can man be righteous with God? If he would want to contend with him, he would not reply even once in a thousand. He is wise of heart and immensely strong. Who ever stubbornly opposed him and remained whole? It is he who uprights mountains and people do not know when he overturns them in his anger, who shakes the earth from its place and its pillars tremble, who gives the command to the sun and it does not shine. It seals up the stars, who alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the crests of the sea, who made Ursa Minor, Orion, and the Pleiades, and the southern constellations, who performs great deeds that are beyond comprehension and wonders beyond number. If he would pass before me, I would not see him. He would move across, and I would not perceive him. If he would suddenly strike, who could restrain him? Who could say to him, What are you doing? God does not turn back his anger. Bent underneath him are those who assist the arrogant. Could I then answer him or choose to argue with him? Even if I were right, I would not speak up, nor would I implore my judge. If I would cry out and he would answer me, I would not believe that he would hear my voice. He shattered me in a tempest. He multiplied my wounds without cause. He does not let me refresh my spirit, but satiates me with bitterness. If it is for strength, behold, he is mighty. But if it is for justice, who can plead on my behalf? Even if I am righteous, my mouth would condemn me. If I am innocent, it would pronounce me crooked. I am innocent, yet I cannot know rest. I am disgusted with my life. It is all the same. Therefore, I say, he destroys the blameless with the wicked. When the rod would slay the wicked one suddenly, he would mock the tribulation of the innocent. The earth is delivered into the hands of the wicked one, who covers the faces of its judges. If this is not so, then who does this? My days passed more swiftly than a runner. They have run away without seeing goodness. They have passed by with the ships of Eba like an eagle swooping after prey. Even if I would say, I will forget my grievance, I will renounce my anger and show fortitude. I fear all my sorrows. I know that you will not acquit me. I will be found guilty. So why should I weary myself for nothing? Though I would wash myself in melted snow and I would cleanse my hands with soap, you would immerse me in the pit. My very clothes would loathe me. For you are not mortal as I am, whom I could answer so that we could go together for judgment. There is no arbiter between us who might impose his authority upon us both. Were he to remove his rod from me and his terror not frighten me, I would speak out and not fear him. For this is not how I perceive myself. Job 10. My soul is disgusted with my life. I will load grief upon myself, and I will speak out in the bitterness of my soul. I say to God, do not condemn me. Tell me why you contend with me. Does it befit you to plunder, that you despise the labor of your hands, but glow upon the schemes of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh? Do you see as a man sees? Are your days like a person's days? Are your years like a man's days, that you search out my iniquity and seek my transgression? You know that I will not be found guilty, yet none can save from your hand. Your hands made me and fashioned me all together, all around, yet you devour me. Remember, please, that you molded me like clay, and that you will return me to the dust. Behold, you poured me out like milk and curdled me like cheese. You clothed me with skin and flesh. You covered me with bones and sinews. You granted me life and were kind to me, and your ordinances protected my spirit. Although you have hidden this in your heart, I know that this is still with you. If I have sinned and you scrutinize me, 
and do not cleanse me of my transgression. If I have been guilty, woe to me. And if I am innocent, I should not raise my head. For I am satiated with disgrace and see my misery. It has become important to you. You hunt me as if I were a lion's whelp, and you repeatedly judge me severely. You always bring new witnesses against me, and you magnify your anger against me. The legion takes turns with me. Why did you remove me from the womb? If only I had expired and no eye had ever seen me, as though I had never existed, I would have been brought from the womb to the grave. Behold, my days are few, so desist. Remove yourself from me, and I will regain my strength for a while before I go and never return to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. The land whose darkness is like pitch blackness, a shadow of death and without order, whose very light is like pitch blackness. Job 11. Zophar the Namathite then spoke up and said, Should an effusive speaker not be answered, is an eloquent orator correct? Your fabrications strike men dumb. You scoff, and no one ridicules you. You say, my teaching is pure. I am virtuous in your eyes. But if God would speak and open his lips to you, he would relate to you hidden recesses of wisdom. For his sagacity is manifold. Know then that God exacts from you less than your iniquities. Can you achieve an understanding of God? Can you fathom the extent of the Almighty? It is like the heights of heaven. What can you do to understand? It is deeper than the pit. What can you know? Its measure is longer than the earth and wider than the sea. If he were to cause death or to aggrieve and then convene the heavenly beings, who could challenge him? For he discerns deceitful people. He sees iniquity, though he seems not to notice. Let the hollow man acquire a heart. Let one who is like a wild ass be reborn as a man. If you would focus your heart and spread forth your hands to him, if there is iniquity in your hand, put it far away, and let not sin dwell in your tent. Then you would lift your face without blemish. You would be steadfast and never fear. Then you would forget misery. You would remember it as water flowed by. Your fate would be brighter than the noon. It would glimmer like the morning. You would be confident, for there would be hope. You would lie down entrenched in security. You would repose with none to make you afraid, and many people would seek your favor. The eyes of the wicked would look with longing. Haven would be denied them. Their hope would become despair. Job 12. Job then spoke up and said, Truly, you are the many. But will wisdom expire with you? I, like you, also possess an understanding heart. I am not inferior to you. Who does not know such things? I have become like one who is a laughingstock to his fellow. I am one who calls out to God, and he answers him. The wholesome, righteous one is a laughingstock, a torch of scorn to the one who is complacent in his thoughts. He is destined to be among those whose feet slip. The tents of robbers are tranquil, and there is security for those who anger God, into whomever's hand God brings it. Please ask the behemoth, however, and it will teach you, the bird of the heavens, and it will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, the fish of the sea will report to you. Who cannot know from all these things that the hand of God made this? that in his hand is the soul of every living thing and the spirit of all mankind. Can the ear not discern words as the palate tastes food? In the aged is wisdom, and in length of days understanding that with him are wisdom and might. His are counsel and understanding. Behold, he demolishes, and it cannot be rebuilt. He locks the door on a man, and it cannot be opened. Behold, he holds back the waters, and they dry up. He sends them forth, and they overturn the land. 
With him are might and sagacity. His are the deceived one and the deceiver. He leads counselors to folly and makes judges irrational. He loosens the yoke of kings and fastens a belt around their loins. He leads ministers to folly and subverts the mighty. He distorts the utterances of the trustworthy and takes reason away from the elders. He pours scorn upon nobles and loosens the belt of the strong. He reveals deep mysteries from the darkness and brings the shadow of death out into the light. He exalts nations and then destroys them. He spread out nations and then leads them away. He removes wisdom from the leaders of common people and causes them to wander in a pathless wasteland. They grope in darkness, not in light. He makes them stagger like a drunkard. They grope in darkness and not in light. Job 13. Behold, my eye has seen everything. My ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I know as well. I am not inferior to you. However, I shall speak to the Almighty. I desire to argue with God. But you are concoctors of falsehood, worthless healers, all of you. Who would grant that you fall utterly silent? That would be a wise thing for you. Hear my argument, if you will, and hearken to the contentions of my lips. Will you speak dishonestly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for His sake? Will you flatter Him? Will you contend on God's behalf? Will all be well when he scrutinizes you? Will you make jest of him as you would make jest of a man? He will surely admonish you. Will you venerate him when you are in his private chamber? Surely his exaltedness would terrify you. His fear would fall upon you. Your remembrance would be likened to ashes, your stature to lumps of clay. So be silent toward me and I shall speak. Let anything that comes pass over me. Why should I carry my flesh with my teeth and put my life in my hand? Were he to kill me, I would still yearn for him, but I will justify my ways before him. He will also be my salvation, but a hypocrite will not come before him. Hear well my words, and let my expression be in your ears. Behold, I have arranged my argument. I know that I will be vindicated. Who is he that would contend with me? Were I to keep silent now, I would expire. Just do not do these two things to me, and I will not conceal myself from your presence. Remove your hand from upon me, and let not fear of you terrify me. Call out, and I will answer. Or else let me speak, and you respond. How many iniquities and sins have I? Appraise me of my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and consider me as an enemy unto you? Do you frighten a driven leaf or chase dry straw that you record rebelliousness about me and ascribe to me the sins of my youth? That you place my feet in fetters, scrutinize all my ways and inscribe my very footsteps? When, after all, it will wear out like rot, like a garment that a moth has consumed. Job 14. A man born of a woman has a short lifespan, and it is sated with anxiety. He emerges like a blossom and is then cut down. He flees like a shadow and does not endure. Do you fix your eyes even upon such a being that you bring me to judgment with you? Who can produce purity from impurity? No one. If his days are predetermined and the number of his months is with you and you have made his limits which he cannot surpass, then turn away from him and let his pain be relieved until, like a hired hand, he craves the end of his day. For there is hope for a tree. Even if it is felled, it can still renew itself and its branching will not cease. Were its roots to become old in the ground and its trunk to die in the dirt, with but a whiff of water, it would blossom and generate branches like a sapling. But a man dies, he becomes feeble, a person perishes, and then where is he? 
As water flows from a sea, as the river becomes arid and dry, so a man lies down and does not rise. They do not awaken until the heavens are no more. They will not be roused from their slumber. If only you would hide me in the pit, conceal me until your anger subsides. Set a fixed time for me, and then remember me. When a man dies, will he live again? Throughout the days of my lifespan, I long for life until the time of my passing comes. Call out, and I will answer you. Cherish your handiwork, for now you count my steps. You have no patience for my sins. My transgressions are sealed in a pouch, and you cling to my iniquity. In truth, a collapsing mountain will produce grain. So too a rock torn from its place. Stones are worn away by water. It washes them into dirt that produces its own aftergrowth. But you have destroyed man's hope. You overwhelm him forever, and he passes away. You change his countenance, and then send him away. Then, when his sons attain honor, he will not know it. When they suffer, he will not discern them. He feels only the pain of his flesh, and his soul will mourn over him.